Hello, and welcome to the Fighting Moose Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Jason Hendrickson. This is a podcast where I retell stories, some fictional and some historical, that can be enjoyed by people of all ages. Today, we continue our journey around the zoo with the story, Giraffes and the Okapi, from the book From an Easy Chair, written by Sir Ray Lancaster. Today, we talk about two animals, one animal that we saw and one animal that I don't think knew existed. When the whole family goes to the zoo, my wife loves the giraffes. That is one of her favorite exhibits at the zoo. I think we all like them because they are so tall. It's pretty awesome when you get so close to them during feeding times and also when they are indoors during inclement weather. For some random trivia, did you know that a group of giraffes is called a tower? That was something I learned during a coronavirus homeschooling. Anyway, the animal that we learned about today is the okapi. Like I said earlier, I don't know if I knew this animal existed or not. To my knowledge, I don't think I have ever seen one or heard of one before today, but when doing a Google search, I found a lot of information. I'll include a link in the show notes to the National Geographic website that has a lot of information about the Okapi. I hope you find it interesting and you learn something. I know I did. Now, let's turn to today's story. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin. Liftoff! We have a liftoff! We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Giraffes and the Okapi The baby giraffe at the gardens in the Regent's Park is a most interesting and beautiful creature. In that respect, she only resembles on a small scale her grown-up relatives. Next to the elephants, giraffes take precedence for strangeness, beauty, and imposing size. Certainly they have done so with me ever since I turned one Sunday afternoon long ago from the great novelty of the day, the first hippopotamus sent from Egypt, round whom the world of fashion was crowding, and gazed into the beautiful eyes that hung over me, supported by a gracefully curving neck. My tender regard for the beautiful creature was not shaken even when I felt a sudden jerk to the elastic band passing under my chin and saw my new leghorn straw hat with its ornamental bunch of Egyptian wheat and broad pink ribbon disappear between the lips of the beauty. A slow right and left movement of the jaw followed, accompanied by a tranquil kindly look suggestive of a desire for more. That was one of the old stock of Regent's Park giraffes, who bred freely, had the gardens, and made money for the society. They died out 30 years ago or more. From time to time since then, there have been one or two misshapen giraffes in London, but they did not eat children's hats nor produce young of their own. A new dynasty of Cordofan giraffes has now arrived and a better spirit prevails. The most interesting thing about the giraffe is the okapi. The remark sounds absurd, but it is true. The okapi is the new animal from the Congo forest of Central Africa discovered in 1901 by Sir Harry Johnston. It is as big as a very large stag, has a neck like a deer, and is striped on the haunches and legs, not spotted as is the giraffe. Yet its teeth and its horns prove it to be a close ally, not of deer, but of the giraffe. Any points of agreement between giraffes and the okapi are, therefore, important. I have examined the baby giraffe at the zoo and find that she has stripe-like bands of hair on the face and on other parts of the head. 
Both her father and mother are from Cordofan and have some six or seven strongly marked bands of dark hair over the eyes and on the muzzle. It is important to note any color striping in the giraffe's skin since the giraffe's color markings are mostly in the form of great spots whilst the okapi is only marked by stripes or bands something like those of a zebra but confined to the haunches and the legs the rest of the body being dark brown. The tendency to develop color stripes in the giraffe is important since it shows us that the stripes do not separate the okapi absolutely from the camel leopard. They are a common possession or possibility of the two animals. It was my examination of a half-brother of the little giraffe now alive at the gardens which led to the discovery of striping on the head and face of giraffes. The mother in that case had died before the birth of her young one and the dead calf was given to me by the secretary of the Zoological Society. Sixty-eight years ago, Sir Richard, then Professor Owen, received a newborn giraffe from the gardens and reported on it to the Zoological Society. No one had examined one since that date. None were obtainable from the zoo, and I could get none from African travelers and sportsmen in spite of urgent requests. I was accordingly greatly pleased to secure one from the London Gardens. A great peculiarity of the young giraffe is that it is born with a pair of well-grown horns, nearly an inch long and covered with coarse black hair. No other horn-bearing mammal, no antelope, buffalo, ox, sheep, goat, stag, or other deer is born with horns, so far as we know and we know a good many of these animals well. Before birth, the young giraffe's horns are flat from back to front and quite soft and flexible. They can be pressed backwards so as to be made to lie flat on the head. Directly after birth, a hard, bony deposit commences inside the horn, and after some years' growth, it becomes firmly fused to the skull. But the hard bony core never breaks through the hairy skin which covers it. The bony core of the okapi's pair of horns, on the contrary, does cut or break through the skin, exposing a sharp, hard point a quarter of an inch in length. In the deer tribe, as everyone knows, the point of the bony horn core spreads out as a large branching growth from which all covering is shed and forms the antler. The deer tribe shed the antlers every year from the top of the horn core and grow a new and larger pair to take the place of the old ones. Moreover, in them, the horn core itself is a stem-like upgrowth of the bone of the skull of the frontal bone. In the okapi and the giraffe, the horn core is a separate bone, free at first and fusing with the skull only when the adult condition is reached. The little antlers or bare points of the okapi's horn cones or cores seems to be shed in segments as growth goes on and are only minute things compared with the antlers of stags. The giraffe's horns, on the other hand, always remain covered by skin and hair and have a broad rounded top, not a sharp point. The real clinching feature in the okapi and giraffe, which decides at once their close affinity to one another, is found in the outer tooth on each side of the group of eight teeth placed in the front of the lower jaw. In both, this particular tooth has a broad chisel-like crown divided into two portions by a deep vertical slit. None of the other ungulate or hoofed animals have this very curious shape of tooth. It is a sort of family mark or feature in okapis and giraffes, as may be seen in specimens shown in the gallery of the Natural History Museum, where we have now no less than three fine, well-stuffed okapis and several varieties of giraffe. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Fighting Moose Podcast. Please join us next time as we read another exciting story. Today's music was provided by the artist Analog by Nature, and the audio clips were provided from NASA. For more information to download and or listen to audio or materials from all our recordings, or to contact us, please visit www.thefightingmoose.com, or you can follow the links in the show notes. And as always, try and do a random act of kindness every day. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history. And it's come to a final stop.